Hi, welcome to another Derek Does. Today, we're doing this. This is my 1943 Bolova Type A11 hack watch worn by troops during World War II. Uh, it's one of the multiple companies that supplied watches for troops. And this watch is kind of special because um, it was a very fancier version, I guess you might say, from the other ones. Let's take a look. This is my 1943 Bolova Type A11 watch. This was given, issued to pretty much every serviceman uh, in the U.S. during World War II. Not this particular watch, but this style of watch. Uh, there were multiple people that made, multiple companies that made this watch. Hamilton, Elgin, Bolova, and I think there's another one. Uh, this is a Bolova uh, that's not marked on the uh, face because, again, these were military watches and they weren't in really interested in trying selling the watch as a, as a fashion thing. On the back, it does say Bolova. And then type A11 and then the uh, serial number with the 43 into it for the contract. This watch is kind of special in that it's a silver a sterling silver case and this was the only watch manufacturer that actually still kind of made sterling silver cases like they would normally for the mass market watches for the military uh, all the others like elgin and uh, hamilton's and even bolivas uh, had uh, just a case metal but this particular one is sterling and you can actually see it's uh, tarnished over time uh, even though it's been cleaned I, when I got the watch, it looked like this. You can see the uh, the, the the crystal of it uh, was this yellow, and the, even the faceplate was the yellowed, uh, all because of the radium that they used back then. Uh, the I guess radioactivity had just had deteriorated the uh, plastic uh, acrylic top and the faceplate. Uh, maybe moisture got in there. I don't know. So I sent this off to a specialty watchmaker that specializes in military watches. And he did a fantastic job. He was able to keep all the hands original. Just had to get a new faceplate, crystal and uh, faceplate that he had to actually get an original that was clean. And then cleaned up the watch. And it runs great. It's fantastic. This isn't the original band, but it's a, a band that is like an original band. I still have the original band that came with it, and it's this. I just didn't want to destroy the original band. Uh, again, the this original band is, I'm sure, Army issued. Uh, and this one is actually the one I have I picked up as a, I guess, a consumer it's vintage. It's probably from the 50s uh, that they sold probably for guys that still had their watches. Uh, and you can see the only real difference is the size of the eyelets on the um, on the holes and also the shape and size of the actual buckle is different on that. But that's what the original looks like. I still have it uh, and I'll keep it since I still have the original watch. So I had it done repaired uh, and it just turned out great I really really like this watch and it's so small that it's so nice to actually to wear because it's just there and you don't realize it's there which is really nice this little uh, little watch which is the common size uh, of men's watches uh, back then uh, they call it a hack feature that you can actually pull out the stem and the second hand stops so uh let's say you have 20 guys all sitting around and they go oh okay at uh, this and such a hour let's sync our watches you've probably seen it in the movies the guys would set their watches you know and they say okay we're gonna set it for you know this and then they go and mark and that way everybody has the exact same time because at 1400 hours something big's gonna happen or something like that. So this is a, a nice feature uh, I don't think this was a common hack feature 
before this time, this kind of whoever invented it kind of invented it during this time. I could be totally wrong though, uh, because today's watches all have that, uh, mechanical at least. Here's some nice sunshine shots. You can see it in the daylight sunshine. Maybe see the the color of the uh, the case a little bit more. That's the stem. It's not marked either. I don't really want to take the band off again to show you the back. Looks like there's one maybe a scratch on the crystal already but I do wear the watch so it it gets use you know it's not a showpiece but just has a really nice sweep second hand even it's just fun to watch I really really like this watch if you can find some old vintage military watches you should get at least one in your collection these you might actually find because they don't look like a military watch and they're small. So probably people will think, oh, it's a woman's watch or something because it's small. But this is the size of what watches were back in the day. I'll show you with it on now. So here you can see it on. You see, it's a very nice, small, doesn't get in the way. And that's kind of what the military wanted. This size of watch kind of went all the way up even into the 70s and 80s. They just wanted a watch that would tell a soldier the time and that's all it needed to do and not get in the way. These big giant watches you see today would never work as a soldier today. Of course on an airplane, a pilot, they would have a big watch because it would have way more features than just telling you what time it is. But here you can see how the band works. It's really nice. It uh, holds it in place. It has two straps to hold it just so it doesn't get floppy. Uh, and also it has a variety of sizes. I'm a smaller wrist, uh, so I'm actually at the top, but you can go all the way, which is almost another two inches or so all the way around. But you know, with a shirt, it you know, doesn't get caught easy on and off. Pretty nice. So there you can see, just a nice, small, perfect size watch, really. Again, that's my 1943 Bolova Type A11 wristwatch with a sterling case. If you like this sort of content, uh, please subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. Uh, if you have one, uh, or if you are thinking about getting one, drop a note. Maybe uh, I don't see them often, uh, but I do see them every once in a while. I've been seeing a lot more of the Vietnam era uh, watches or even from the 80s, uh, but finding a World War II one's kind of special because it's, even though they probably made millions and millions of them, there aren't a million left. Uh, and if you can find a nice one, get it. And uh, you can send them off and have them restored. Uh, and then you pretty much have a new watch that's 80 years old, which is kind of nice. So uh, I'll see you next time.